How's everybody doing today? This is Ace again bringing you another video. Today I will be talking about 4K, 4K equipment, and what you need to know about 4K and how it works so that you don't have any problems viewing 4K content in the near future. Because it's not as easy as you may think. It's not a matter of just calling your service provider and say, hey, I want 4K. There's a few things that need to take place or that need to be in line in order for you to be able to watch 4K. So uh, listen up, here we go. So, the most important thing is HDCP. And I'm gonna be using this acronym a lot because that's basically what I'm gonna be talking about. It relates to 4K programming and your 4K equipment at home. So HDCP, High Definition Content Protection, it's been around for a while. Lately, it upgraded, well, it upgraded in 2015 to 2.2 version, and this affects 4K programming. So uh, what I want to talk about is um, 4K programming, 4K content, 4K equipment, and your 4K televisions at home. If you don't already have one, good because uh, you're basically more in the clear than those that already have 4K TVs that are older than 2014. Uh, what I mean by, by that and how it will affect you is the following. If you bought a TV 2014 or before, uh, then this will affect you in a bigger way because HDCP more likely will block that 4K content because uh, TVs older than 2014 may not have the latest version of HDCP which is 2.2 and I don't believe there's a firmware upgrade or of a, a software update that can fix that and I hope it doesn't affect all of you Netflix Netflix watchers or uh, YouTube watchers I don't believe so but um, as far as television providers such as cable companies and satellite companies um, it will affect you guys so uh, listen up. Uh, to explain a little bit about uh, HDCP, if you don't already know what it means, I will leave a, a link below in the description box so you can learn a little bit more about it. But uh, just to give you an example of what it does, if you have a cable box and you have uh, 4K programming through your cable provider and you connect it to a recorder to, let's say, download a movie for a friend, or record a movie for a friend. I doubt that this recorder will be HDCP compliant. So you'll be able to record your movie or your program, but you won't be able to record it in 4K. Okay? Again, this HDCP is in play to protect against piracy or against content theft. So I'm pretty sure you you know where I'm going at. Um, if you try to download something illegally you know, you won't be able to download it in the resolution that you want, which is 4K. Everything will be downgraded to 1080, 1080i, 1080p, but it will block that 4K signal. Okay, that's what HDCP is. Again, you're going to hear me saying HDCP a lot. That's what I'm talking about. Just be patient with me, bear with me. Um, this will help you out a lot. Not just the consumers, also the installers, the fellow techs out there that are going to be running into problems, into messages such as this you know where it tells you that this TV doesn't support 4k programming it's not the TV it's not that your TV doesn't support 4k programming it's it goes beyond that so let me explain if your television uh, is 4k and it's the latest version of HDCP if your HDMI cable isn't then you're gonna get this problem you're not gonna be able to watch programming 4k your HDMI cable also needs to be uh, compliant to, HD, to HDCP and support the latest version of it, which is 2.2. If it doesn't, then you're screwed. You need to go get one that is. Okay? Now, if that's all you're going to connect, your cable box to the TV and your, H, and your HDMI cable is HDCP 2.2, then you're in the clear. You're fine. You should be able to watch your program, no problem. But... If you're going to connect an inline device like a soundbar 
or a surround sound audio receiver, then that too needs to be HDCP 2.2 compliant. Like I said, it's not as easy as you think. As you think, you need to have all of this in line. So your TV has to be uh, 2015 and newer, HDCP support 2.2 version, HDMI cable has to be 2.2 version of HDCP, and your sound bar or your surround sound receiver or things already have to be HDCP compliant with the latest version of 2.2. If any of those things are missing, chances are you're not going to be able to watch 4K programming. Again, trust me, I have ran into this problem lately in the field where a customer had 4K TV, HDMI was HDCP 2.2, the only thing that wasn't compliant and didn't support 2.2 HDCP was his surround sound audio device. He said he paid $600 for it, it says 4K pass through, but don't be fooled. Be careful with this. Even if it says 4K pass-through, it doesn't mean a thing. It needs to be compliant with HDCP and have the latest version of it of 2.2. Now, there's a lot more content coming out uh, pretty soon. There's really not that much at the moment. Uh, you can find some at Netflix. You can find some of uh, Amazon Fire, Google Chrome, Google TV. But um, as far as your service provider there's not that much content out there right now so I just want to help you out and um, help you make these decisions and help you get all of the equipment that you need so that you're ready to go for when 4k is more common which is maybe in a year hopefully maybe two years at the most plus a year from now 4k TVs are gonna be like $800 cheaper so it's a no-brainer do the math. Don't go out spending money on stuff you don't need right now. At least that's my opinion. If you're one of those people who just likes to buy the latest equipment out there the first day it comes out, because I've seen these people, if you want to have the biggest TV out there, then that's just a whole different animal. That's just something different that may we may need to talk about. You know, but you don't need all of that stuff. You sometimes you overdo it. Some people go overboard. Trust me, I've seen an 80 inch TV mounted on the wall in the dining room of a customer's house. The dining room, 80 inch TV, I don't know why, but that's what he did. Okay, so you don't need all that. If you're one of those guys, don't know what to tell you. But look, I'm just here to help. I'm just doing these videos to help people out there. I give my opinions. That's all. I'm not saying don't go out and buy the 90 inch TV. If you want to, that's fine. It's it's your choice. But do you really need it that big? Do you really need that much? No, you don't. You don't. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope this video was helpful. Um, this video isn't just for the consumers. It's also for the fellow techs, the fellow installers out there that are running into these problems. Because I know when I started running into them, you know, it kind of blew my mind. Just I was overwhelmed with uh, how many people were buying this equipment and were having problems. And um, at first I couldn't figure it out. It, you know, it takes some time. Sometimes, you know, these things you just have to learn on your own or as you go. So um, now that I know what the issues are and how to troubleshoot, I do this video for the people out there that are also running into these problems. Hopefully now this um, gives you a little bit more knowledge on, on the fact and um, on 4K equipment. And when you do see this to the installers and to the techs, when you guys do see this problem, you know, just be a little professional with the customers um, hopefully this helps you again to troubleshoot these problems be patient and hopefully watching this video now can help you troubleshoot some of these problems and for the consumers out there for the customers that are trying to buy all this equipment hopefully this also helps you in making those right decisions 
and not having to spend a ton of money on 4K equipment that you don't really need because simple equipment can work with 4K as long as everything's compliant with HDCP. Okay, so thank you for, for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already.